part two retake. We're doing another edition of Calling the Audible. Uh, spring season. Iggy Magnets. No one knew. <laughs> no one knew. No one knew, but we're telling everyone what's going on. Iggy Magnets, the Nightingale, and I here in uh, spring season 2024. We had a bit of a fumble in our first drive. So this is a redo of the first fumble of the season. And uh, we we're happy to be back. Uh, it was a long winter campaign of four months, but this will be a normal FPS spring season that we'll have. And we look forward to bringing you all the content out there, you know, and a bit of a change for this spring year. Uh, Iggy and I will be here, no question about that. But uh, we'll have an old face back in the saddle and some new faces as well that will be joining the show uh, to let them kind of marinate, let them grow, and eventually, uh, sooner than later, uh, take over for us idiots uh, as the uh, captains of the ship down the road. So we look forward to uh, what should Ooh, be a uh, fun season for FPF. Who who exactly are we, uh, we idiots, uh, Mo? Not everyone knows us. This is the first episode. You know, I, I always say, or I always think to myself, I don't always say it, uh, that this one, the, every episode is someone's first episode. So who the hell are we and what are we doing here? Well, as I said, you're Iggy Madness, Nightingale, and I, we're the hosts of the show. It's, that's what it is, right? Where can we also be seen, uh, Mo? Uh, I, can I just only see you here on uh, on screen? or uh, can You can see, see me. Uh, well, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You can see me uh, Sunday mornings, Layola Field 3, Monday Papineau Field 1, Brossard Field 3, Laval Field 1. All right. Anyway, uh, you're, uh, so you're a scorekeeper, okay? I okay. apparently am. Uh, no, what, like show is pretty much we recap for those who are watching for the first time ever. Recap the league that that the week that was for the league from top to bottom, from Div A right down to Women's Two and divisions in between. Ig and I preview, talk about key storylines, and just keep everyone in tune and, and let everyone know, hey, this is who Team X, Y, and Z are all about. This is what Player A, B, and C are all about. And that's what the show is all about. It's about to have fun, quirky, stupidness that happens between us two and, and other people who are involved. We'll have on guests throughout the course of the season who cover your division and talk about their thoughts, if they like your team, don't like your team, what they've what they've been impressed by so far. And it's it's going to be fun. And we look forward to having different voices this spring season uh, coming up. So let's just quickly go to some quick um, league headlines here. Uh, team pictures. As of this Sunday and beyond, uh, scorekeepers are going to take team pictures. So please be kind and understand towards the scorekeepers. Their role is just to take a team picture of your roster. Now, you're going to say, well, hey, we don't have uniforms. Uh, we're missing guys or gals. Uh, can we do it next week? Let's take the picture, and we'll do. We'll have a redo at a later time when you have a full roster. And, you, and remind us, go, hey, scorekeeper X, Y, uh, we took a picture of my team back in week two, but can we do another one? And no problem, we'll do it, and we'll post up the more – updated version of your roster down the road. So please be understanding of what's going to be done for this week and beyond on taking team pictures and just take it and we'll do another one if it need be down the road. Iggy. Yeah. Just going back to the schedule there. Uh, so basically a lot, uh, a lot more consistent uh, this year than the winter season. It's going to be a true 11 week regular season with uh, two weeks of playoffs of course, we have the finals dates already locked into place, uh, which would be Sunday, August 11th, Monday, August 12th. Uh, so those dates are set. The times and the rest of the playoff dates will be uh, released in a few weeks already. So no, uh, definitely plan around those dates. And look, we really want to limit the, the number of late uh, season emails saying, hey, the playoffs are next week. Can we get it changed? Uh, they're going to be released in three to four weeks or or if not sooner. So definitely take a look at the playoff dates, times. Um, that's going to be available. Book around uh, that. We know there's a lot of vacations uh, and holidays uh, during the summer. So uh, to maximize uh, your team's roster, take a look at that. Of course, we're going to have major holidays off. Uh, St. Jean-Baptiste weekend, uh, Canada Day weekend. And, uh, and of course, Mo Khan's uh, sabbatical one day uh, for uh, Victoria Day Monday. Which is Mo Khan Day, actually. Only at yeah, Mo Khan Day, actually. Okay. That's what it's All called. Right. Two years in a row. Right. Two years in a row. And then, Mo, um, since we have a lot of new teams uh, playing in FPF uh, for the first time in the spring season, I uh, wanted to talk about rosters. And uh, we'll start with uh, the cap system 
in place. So every division has a cap uh, that you cannot surpass a cap number. It will take the sec six best rated players, uh, both offensively and defensively, regardless of the number of snaps, even if they get injured on the first play, if they are playing and in the game, uh, they count towards your cap. And the way that works and the way you can verify uh, whether you have a legal roster for your division, uh, this uh, roster verification tool under the resources, uh, you are able to search your players, type in their names, uh, select whether they are your quarterback, which should would have a quarterback rating or an offensive rating, otherwise known as a receiver rating, uh, and start building out your team from there. So in uh, this iteration, We'll have uh, me, of course, not Mokon at quarterback. Uh, we'll have uh, Mr. Jerome Hovington uh, play on our team. Uh, look, we'll have uh, Pease. I always write Pease when I search for this guy. Uh, Paolo Della Rocca. Look, he's going to... Uh, he's going to be throwing some passes. Uh, I'll be dropping him back on a few plays, so I want to use uh, the higher of his two ratings. Uh, we're also going to add... Uh, we're going to make a lot of uh, quarterbacks here. Uh, Emil Scaff. We're going to make like a quarterback team here. Uh, who else quarterbacks? Uh, we're going to use Joe Meyer. I want him on the roster. And some of the players that he knows as well. I always do Chris when his name's actually Christopher on the site. So you get the idea here that you add uh, players to your roster and you'll see that it'll uh, automatically take the six best uh, offensive and the six best defensive players. Uh, and this roster cannot play in Division B, C, D. It can only play in uh, in Division A. Uh, <laughs> That's the most so rating for you boys. <laughs> so uh mokan's gonna be the uh wide receiver of the year here on this team uh so just always use this tool uh, especially if you're using subs uh and adding players to your roster for uh for any given night just to double check and remember it's uh captain's responsibility to make sure that you don't violate the uh the cap uh it is not a scorekeeper's responsibility right. uh on our application Every uh, player is rated at 50, so you don't see these ratings of uh, 77 and 79.1. You don't you don't see them on the application. So uh, make sure even you know you're five minutes before your game and you're on your phone. Uh, go ahead and use our roster verification tool. And, and lastly, uh, uniforms. Uh, before we get to the topics of jour here, so right now uh, league policy states that the first two weeks of the season, um, if you don't have uniforms, we give you a grace period. And week three, so starting week three and beyond, you must have your uniforms. That means same color or within the same general vicinity of the color that you're wearing. So if you're wearing black, you can wear navy, dark navy blue. But most importantly, though, numbers. It cannot be markered. It cannot be taped. It's got to be a, a legitimate number that's visible, seen by the referees and scorekeepers, and also the, the opposing teams to understand who's out there. And if you don't have that done, if you're missing a number, if you have a market number or a tape number, you will not get the games or stats. And you need five games to be playoff eligible for the spring season. And it always happens. And Iggy, you know and I know, it always happens. We always get those emails at the end of the season. Hey, um, John Smith played week one at Loyola at 10 a.m. Well, no. If you noticed there was a discrepancy or there's an issue, hey, that why wasn't my guy or he or she given the roster the game played? Email us right away so we can do an investigation of why your player was not given the game. It might be uniform protocol. It might be the fact that he, didn't, he or she did not check in with our scorekeeper. Because when you leave it for the last part of the year, it's a headache, and we can't do anything about it. It's plain and simple. So please be on top of your rosters, and please make sure your players have the proper colors and proper numbering on the uniform moving forward after week two. Yeah, just just give the roster uh, a, a check after your games. You everyone's checking the stats anyways. Just make sure that everyone that was supposed to be there got the game played. Uh, and if you're curious why you know someone didn't get a game played, 
email the league and we we can uh, do like most said, a, a further investigation likely it's a uniform violation uh, that uh, the scorekeepers are, should let you know on the field uh, there's there's really nothing to hide uh, they'll let you know that hey look your guys not getting a game played M- rectify this get this uh, sorted out for your future games but for today can't give unfortunately we can't give the game played can't give the stats uh, just if they do want to be part of your playoff uh, roster that they need the games played, get them a, a uniform that, um, again, matches the same uh, color or shade as your team and uh, has a legitimate pressed on number front, back, on the side, whatever, but just has to be uh, clearly visible. Uh, but uh, you do have seven days. It, it is in the rules. You have yeah. seven days to contest a, uh, a game day roster. Yep, absolutely. So please, uh, we'll, we the scorekeepers will remind you of the infraction. So once you get reminded, you have to you have to do something about it. So that's pretty much about it. Okay, let's let's dive into it. Uh, unlike Div, I like winter season, uh, a much smaller amount of divisions, but of course, always robust numbers of teams in the divisions here. Um, we do have some uh, news announcements here for playoff formats, which we will reveal on the show. Um, let's go with five on five. Start off the new season with a new league. In FPF, uh, five versus five, um, much smaller numbers. This is more of a, what we see internationally speaking here for flag football worldwide, uh, whether it's in Canada, whether it's in the U.S., Mexico, so on and so forth. This will be the format more or less for the Olympic Games in L.A. in 2028. Uh, five versus five, Iggy. Um, it has its pros. It has its cons. Uh, what do you want me to start off with? Because I've done two games so far of five versus five. Yeah, let's just talk about, you know, five and five in general. Um, Clearly, uh, it's going to take a a bit of time to grow. Clearly, five on five is uh, is the standard and uh, where you're seeing a lot of growth worldwide, honestly, for uh, for flag. Um, You know, not not exactly what we hope for or maybe maybe it is exactly what we thought it would be. But we opened for the registrations, you know, the idea of maybe having uh, uh, three divisions for uh, four, five on five. Uh, obviously, I think the, the number was a little smaller than uh, than uh, what FPF would have hoped for. But yeah. uh, I think three divisions was there just in case there were, you know, 60 teams that signed up. You're not going to have 60 teams in one division, right? You would have had 20, 20, 20, so that that out, that spread would have already been done uh, prior to, to teams signing up. Uh, now, what it comes down to is a one competitive uh, 5v5 format, and it's going to be really interesting here. Like you're saying, pros and cons in terms of how it fits with the FPF timing and the rigid kind of rigid one hour uh, game schedules that we, that we have in terms of not, you know, overflowing into a second and third and fourth game of the night and lights potentially being turned off. So, you you know, there may be some timing issues uh, that will have to, uh, that will have to play out. I think Mo, your biggest concern is with the pro clock. So if you're uh, playing in the division, uh, the final two minutes of the half and the final two minutes of a game, if you go out of bounds, if there's an incomplete pass, the clock stops. And there are no five plays, though, however, at the end of the uh, of the two minutes. So a bit of a different dynamic there. We wanted to keep, uh, you know, certain things like two flag belts. Uh, spot of the ball is uh, the, the furthest point of the football. Bring some of those elements that teams are used to and players are used to or not used to when they go to from a FPF six on six format to a competitive uh, tournament outside of uh, of FPF. Uh, you know, things like outstretching the ball, we're not used to doing. And every single person is doing it at these tournaments. So we wanted to, you know, make those those uh, little tweaks uh, into the division to make sure that uh, that that standard of gameplay and, and style of play is uh, is seen on the FPF fields. Yeah, it, it's going to take some time for this league to grow. Uh, like any other FPF league that we had, women's, same thing, right? Even FPF back in 2005 to where we are today. I mean, year one at 18 teams. Year two blew up to over, I think, 50-plus or 60, whatever it was in year two. And then the rest is history, you know, knock on wood. Co-ed, but co-ed as well. Co-ed, exactly. Every, every new startup division that we've done has always had a small number, but it always improves year by year. So we, we expect that to happen for uh, five versus five. Uh, in the coming years, that it will get bigger and bigger. Um, my 
I've done two games so far. Uh, Bravs against uh, Party Crashers. Uh, Jameson's uh, played Flagmore. Uh, Flagmore Sack. Thank you so much, Flagmore Sack. So, not to get too deep into the storylines yet because it's still early, but the flow is good. Five on five mm-hmm. is cool. Smaller field, 25 yards uh, width. Standard length is, as is for any FPF field that we have. Um, we see a lot more p- plays of yards. So, we see these guys. I mean, like Joe Mayer, I think almost had 300 yards in the game. Uh, Fred Dupier, yeah. like 177. I think um, Jeff Rosenblatt and, and Alex Nando Pews, somewhere in the 220s, roughly. And I think the, the key is how you manage the clock um, in the games, how you sustain drives, because you have four plays to get to midfield for a new set of downs, and then you got four more plays to score unless there's penalties involved. And I think that's going to be fascinating to see how the strategy will, will be administered in this uh, context compared to the FPF traditional six on six, where it's uh, 10 yards every first down type of thing here. So I think it has great potential. Uh, I told you my frustrations about the pro clock uh, with two minutes left, how long it takes, and we'll, we'll figure it out as we move along, uh, trying to master that to make it more seamless for everyone to enjoy and not have these stop and goes. It felt like, you know what it felt like, Iggy? It felt like, I know you're not an NBA guy, but it felt like I was watching the NBA game where it's the team chasing the game or chasing the team down by six, they're they're fouling every two seconds. So with two minutes left in the game, it takes 20 minutes to finish. And that's right. how it yeah. felt like watching the five-on-five. Five. Like, my God, yeah, it yeah, takes yeah. an extra 50 minutes because you got timeout, 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 going out of bounds here, going out of bounds there. You pass midfield, clock stops. So I think that's where the flow stops when you go past midfield. Something like shit. that, yeah. <laughs> some 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 crazy like weird thing. But that's where I want to see that there's better flow, like you know, because the clock stops, you you got time to kind of take a deep breath. Where I want to see a little bit more urgency with these teams. But I think it has great potential. It's just a question of us trying to master it and get the best of both worlds. But the teams that are in it right now, um. Braves will be the favorites, I think. There's no, there's no, um, there's no doubting that point, Iggy. And uh, I think Flagmore Sack will be up there, and it's going to be fun. I think first one to forty wins these type of games with these type of uh, quarterback throws that we have in this league. Yeah. Uh, sorry, there's a bit of an issue with uh, with some of the F- FPF operations that's uh, going on. Uh, oh, uh, flag belts uh, for tonight. Uh, may may be an issue that i'm trying to solve here at the same time um okay for, yeah 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 <laughs> fun times i'm getting phone calls and messages as the show's happening right now um yeah my my take from uh five on five um i'm i'm gonna be interested to see uh how diamond bougie uh does in this uh in this division it's a division with a lot of heavy hitters right you have the the the, the high-powered offenses and just teams in general, right? Of Flag Malsac, Braves, KGB, Royaume. I, I, I wonder how this team's gonna do. I think they're gonna be okay offensively, where the where the team's just gonna put up, you know, where they're sorry, they're gonna let up like fifty plus points. It's gonna be a weekly question of can they put sixty and or fifty plus uh plus one over their uh, over their opponents. And that's gonna right. be a tall ask. So I think I think a season of like two and eight would actually be a good season uh, for for a team like uh, Diamond Bougie. Yeah, I think. Look, I think D and B will be fine. I think they they're going to learn. They got guys that they have. They got the physical traits that can play well in this type of um, area of five on five, being smaller and, and just having more quickness than being fast in this type of field surface. So I think they'll be okay. I think uh, Jameson's led by Jeff Roseblatt will be okay. Um, I don't think there'll be any blowouts, to be honest with you. I don't think we'll have, like, you know, 18-point blowouts that we see in the six-on-six format. But it, it's going to be fascinating. That's why once we get that pro clock thing figured out, it'll be fascinating to see how this plays out uh, with the, the rest of the season. All right, Iggy, um, Division D. Uh, we got a unique circumstance here. We got 25 teams, so five groups of four. Five, uh, shall we do the playoff unveiling of the of the format that we're gonna go with for the spring season playoffs in mid July? Uh, I think we're good for uh, for Division D. Yes. Yeah, I think we agreed upon that. So the format that we're gonna go with is that there's 25 teams, 
and we are, have adopted uh, the Div Three Winter format, which was a hit with a lot of teams because of how it played out. And what we're doing is we're doing a bracket style playoff format for Division D. Now, what does that mean? For those who are college basketball fans of the NCAA uh, persuasion, uh, they do a bracket format. Uh, obviously, 64 teams, we don't have that number. We have 20 of 25 making the playoffs. And within that 20 teams, the first 12 will be automatically in the bracket. And seats 13 through 20 will pl- will have a playing game to get in for the final four spots. So there'll be a 16 team playoff overall. And we have division winners that will have be seats one, two, and three, and four. The fifth division winner will be essentially your fifth seed overall in the whole playoff format. So we're going 20 team playoff bracket style. And uh, you win your division, you are going to be in the top five overall seeds of where you, you will be placed in the playoff format for Division D. Very nice. Uh, very interesting. Um, yeah, uh, that's it's going to be uh, going to be uh, interesting to see. Uh, do you have a favorite in uh, in in Division D? I kind of like what I saw from uh, from the process uh, with Noah Groper back at quarterback. Um, I, I, I liked uh, what I saw there. Uh, I think hey, hey, Marty is their opponent that they, uh, that they beat, you know, that, that could have been a week one finals, uh, pr- prediction. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like what, um, what Marty Friedman has done so far, you know, in his quarterback career, he has now two seasons under his belt. Uh, let's see what, what a third season has in store for, uh, for Hale Marty's. Uh, bandits, man. I don't know. Bandits, Emil Scaff, your favorite, uh, your favorite FPF or frenemy. Um, not, I don't know. 18 to six in their first victory over a somewhat new team. Uh, or, or actually it was, I think against, uh, SNP salts and Pepa coming up from, uh, from division six. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be another middle of the pack team that maybe goes, you know, around two playoffs uh, deep. Um, yeah, I, I'm liking uh, the process in Hale Marty's to make a deep run in uh, Division D. So I think Ambush has uh, elements to make a potential run. I think it's on Phil Roberts as a quarterback on this roster. He's the the guy for them. Um, they they're two zero, so they're off to uh, they they had a doubleheader this week. But I, I look at their division with Jagger bombs as well in that conversation. But I think that Ambush has some really good players to work with. Um, a big throwing under the bus Ben McMahon on Monday you're playing ball Hawks you're up by I think what it was I think it was by six I'm sorry by two or three points you're in plays you have five plays left all you need is a first down and the game is over Ben McMahon catches a, 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 a hook gets the first down Game should be over. He decides to score. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> decides to score, so it, no. it ends up being a seven-point lead for ambush. Oh, no. And I gave Benny. I go, Ben, you're an idiot. He's like, Why? You go down, the game's <laughs> over. Oh yeah, you're right, man. I wasn't thinking about that. And I said, I hope you guys lose. <laughs> I hope you guys lose. Oh. And they got a safety to end off the game, so that 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 erased whatever it was, but. But they, they have a good team. I, I think they have a good team. This has been a, a team that's been together. You know, McMahon, Chris Colatonio. Um, you look at Kevin Donnett, who's a, a safety valve for Phil Roberts as a, as a receiver. They, the way he's shaping up right now, I mean, they could be uh, 5-0 and by the time we hit mid-June. And that's the team I'm watching out for. But Jagerbaum is also going to be a tough um, outing for them. They'll play them in, in Loyola on a Sunday morning coming up in June. But those are two teams I'm watching out for in Division D. And, again, mm-hmm. you win your division, you're guaranteed a top five spot, maybe a top four, depending on how well your win-loss record is. And it's massive, man, because in bracket format, man, it takes one team, an underdog, to get hot, and you can be knocked out. And that can just wreck a bracket overall here. So you want to you wanna get these wins and get yourself a good matchup at the end of the day. But I'm watching out for Ambush is my team that could be in that Final Four conversation. Uh, in late July, early August. 
Yes. Absolutely. No, you're so distracted. Do you remember? I, I love, I love how stressed issue. you are. I'm dealing with the issue. I love how stressed you are, Iggy. <laughs> uh, these flag belts have been a uh, pain in the backside for everyone out there. Uh, right now. Well, the flag belts are fine. We'll just have a. Uh, it's just remember, Mo. I I have my phone is being used for this, so I don't have access to my phone right mm. now. So just keep that in mind Fair as enough, you uh, as you read certain, some messages. Yeah, no um, problem. Yeah, I just quick. I, I was going to say quickly here, Glow you're, you're Gang, right. yeah. um, they're back. Yes. Ben Vanier, Sifax Cassid, all these guys, Tali Stewart as well, yeah. uh, Frank Laramie as well. They, they got some dudes on this team. You know, you know they, they lost to Cookie Monsters on Sunday. Um, under That's my dark horse team uh, to watch out for this season is uh, Glow Gang and what Bruno Provence does as a quarterback for them. Yeah, they, they can definitely do damage. It didn't look good uh, the first first week, like you said, against Cookie Monsters. I mean, they did have a, a sub QB in Charles Vettel, which is uh, ridiculous. I, I can't believe Charles Vettel can still throw in Division D and not bust the cap. That that uh, I was thinking about the that about that the other day, and that I was He's like, yeah, boys, you huh? can throw in Division D. That's the so yeah. They're look, they're not going to face many teams uh, with a Charles Vettel at, at quarterback. Uh, let's see that they're going to be okay. Like they're not going to lose every game 42, 25, like they did, but I don't know. It's going to be a middle of the pack team for me. I think a lot of it's going to, going to go through uh, Bruno Prevanche, who's looked better at quarterback, by the way, with all the reps he's getting in co-ed, he's looking better. Obviously, <laughs> obviously this week in co-ed wasn't great. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I wouldn't call them a dark horse. That's just an average team in, in division D for me. Uh, division a, um, so we can unveil the playoff format for Division A, Iggy. I would imagine that we're good for that. Yes. All right. That's making we, sure. I love how like you, your eyes are like veering off to the left, looking at something else, and <laughs> I can say anything I want, and you'd be like, "Yeah, absolutely, uniforms, yes. absolutely, yes, absolutely, uniforms, absolutely." The stress in your face is evident right now. Okay. Um. Division A, we have our yeah. playoff format. And uh, what we've agreed upon is that we will have six of the seven that will qualify for the Division A playoffs. So there's seven teams, mm -hmm. six will qualify in the playoffs. The top two seeds will get a bye. That's standard in a six-team playoff. But we've added a little twist to this whole oh. equation, Iggy. Baby, what's the twist, Mo? What's the twist? So... What we've decided to do, the winners of three versus six, four versus five will advance to play the bot, the teams in the bot, right? The top seed will have a choice of who they'll face in the Div A semifinals. Very interesting. I uh, I love the uh, the idea here. Yeah, explain a little further if you may. So reason why we've gone with this, with this idea is uh, the PWHL, which is the new professional women's hockey league that's now been in play for since January, have they added this wrinkle where the the top seed the the team of the buy could choose their opponent on who they would face in their opening round of the playoff run, and it got great feedback and great reviews from those in the, who are fans of the league, players, and media. Because it just adds a different element. So, for example, let's just take the current stands that we have right now. Braves, Mangoose, Bless, Wyeth, Rejects, Pride of Crash, Spearhead. Let's say those are the six teams that qualify, right? In the 3-6 matchup, Bless plays Spearhead, Bless wins, okay? Uh, and Pride of Crash beats Wyeth, Rejects. Sorry, Iggy, okay? The Braves, at that point, would have a choice of who they want to face. Mm-hmm. So this imagine, Iggy, you're telling we were saying uh, during the during the day. Imagine yeah. they pick your team. They're saying that your team is an easy win for them, and that right, yeah, you're no yeah, competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 so, so three, why? Did they get the, the so hold on. So seeds one and two would get a buy. Yeah. Which if you've seen, we've updated the uh, the standings here to reflect that six out of seven teams make it. Yeah. Um, and so one and two get a buy. What? Uh, it's not three versus six, four versus five. Yeah, they get to pick any of the team, any of the four teams uh, from three through the six. winners that advance. Yeah. Oh, the 
Yes, right. Uh, okay, so three would play six, and four would play five. Yeah. Whoever wins those and games, four teams left, and then they can they they choose the semifinalists. Exactly, uh, exactly. I, I like it because Iggy, can you imagine? Uh, and, and remember, Div One had some upsets. Okay, like um, Party Crashers wrecked Flagmore Sag. Right. Braves got wrecked by. Um, by uh, Ryan Lumiel well, yeah. as well, uh, and, and it was an overtime game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this, this, that unknown of not of not knowing who's going to play, and if you're the number one seed, you have a choice to set the the, the tone. So if you're the Braves, who are off to a great start as usual, two and zero, man, like to knock them off as like a bleep you for picking us as your your choice is like a badge of honor, I think. And I think for Mangoose, a team that that came up so short in the Div, Div Two final. This is a step up in weight class, but they can definitely prove a point that maybe it's a diving board for winter next year to be a Div 1 team for them. Yes. You're so distracted. I love it, man. I love it. It's amazing. I mean, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, honestly. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, where's <laughs> Bees? Man, we miss Bees. In the winter season, yeah, there were a lot of upsets. Uh, I yeah, I like this added wrinkle. It's gonna give a lot of teams that were picked. It's gonna you know light a little fire under them. Like, oh yeah, you th you think you can beat us? Okay, let's uh, let's give you a run for your for your money. Uh, it's also gonna you know say something about the team that they don't pick as well, right? Uh, that maybe like oh that's that's a worse matchup for us. It's gonna be interesting to see what the, what those decisions are for uh for that number one seed for sure that's going to be something that a lot of teams are are fighting for so maybe the braves will uh will actually i you know you said that they are off to a good start like always that's actually incorrect they, they this team always has like very mediocre regular seasons they just make sure everyone gets five games played on their roster that they want and uh that they qualify for playoffs and then uh they do their damage of course in the playoffs that's the, well uh, i mean when i say a good start like usually they're like one three and one after like five games right, right. Like two and oh yeah. and um they could they could be three and oh when they play your team in a, in a i think in 10 days time for now so a week and a half but i think they're the favorites right now iggy for div a um we're not going to question that i think the race for second is gonna be fascinating because I think Spearhead will get themselves back in that conversation. You know, uh, KGP, they're own too, but they had some close losses. And I think they'll be in that conversation. Um, blessed, they're sneaky. I'm, uh, I, I want to see if they take that next step, given where they were in the winter season. And they got a good core to work with. And I, ca I score kept their game against uh, you guys. Yep. And, I mean, obviously it was not a great game for you as a quarterback, but they, they got some – pieces that can really change a game on a blink of an eye and i'm curious to see what they do this season in the spring spring year yeah same thing um it's a good roster but it's not the braves it's not spearhead i think those are your two you know powerhouses in the division uh i don't even think like and, and my team's not not you know, in that in that weight class either, um, we're we're certainly going to try, and so is blessed, and they they have you know key key pieces there, but uh, there's there's something missing on the rest of the rosters uh, that uh, that the the Braves and spearheads of the world are are going to try and take advantage of. Um, yeah, you know, in terms of my poor performance, it was also kind of scoreline uh, dependent. You know, down 12, down 18, you're forced to to move the ball a little faster, take more shots downfield, which can inevitably lead to more turnovers. Uh, you know, so the, to put up 40, it's fine. But then to give up 58 on the other side, I didn't put my my defense in a great position. But if, you know, Stephen Harapasov is going to go eight touchdowns, no interceptions. I mean, I wasn't winning the game. Put up, I wasn't, I wasn't going to points that night right so yeah so uh you know tale tale of a every every game's its own story and uh and that one uh just you know was it blessed and give credit to bless they they played perfectly both ways i mean maybe not perfectly defensively but right well good enough to get three stops and a pick six and uh and offensively just uh steve you know did his thing torched a, a defense <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, uh, if you prorate your stats, because you have 11 TDs, 6 INTs, Oof, yeah, uh, you're on your way to 50-plus touchdowns and 30 <laughs> INTs. 
<laughs> yeah, baby, I'm going the 30 for 30, yeah, but just you, a little you, better than Jameis. It's like um it's like a baseball player that hits home runs but has a high ratio of strikeouts, right? Like it's either home run or strikeout. That's what you're doing right now right. in the Bay. And I said to uh, Jack Nudie or, or Conrad Keeble, who who ref who officiated a game on uh, Tuesday in Brossard. You're on Conrad's side, yeah. Yeah, I said, Conrad, welcome to Div A, Friggy. <laughs> That's what I said to Conrad. But yeah, again, yeah. I think no, it's. But I'm, I'm good with the one and one split after two games. Though. Yeah, I'm no, for you. sure. I'm, and I'm and I think right now, it. just to get the sixth seed, okay, for for the playoffs right now. I'm thinking four wins. Yeah, yeah, is is the target number right now? And if you're at you're at one and one, you're through. Like if you split, you're going to the playoffs with five wins. There's no question about right. that. Well, five wins could that that could be a five and five team could be the six the six seed could be could be. I think four is going to be the six seed. I think yeah. five and five will be probably five five seed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but right now the Braves, I, I think the target mark for the Braves is eight wins and they get the, the number one seed, if they are going to be the number one seed. I, I can see Spearhead be, being the number one seed. And I, and let's not count out Mangoose. We do this every year, and they they were – were they the one or two seed in uh, Division Two in the winter? I they, think they were, were the – um, I think they were the two seed. and uh, I believe so. Yeah, they were the two seed. Yes. Uh, against uh, Cap Friendly. Brand yes, that's right. They were the two seed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but look, Spe uh, Spearhead, uh, but Spearhead will play Mangoose um, in 11 days from now. Okay. So we'll know, that right? Look, we'll know where Mangoose stacks up with Spearhead. And yeah. for Mangoose, uh, their schedule after that, uh, they got blessed before that. So they go back to back nights, 26th, 27th. They played Bless and Spearhead. And then, in fact, they play three games in three in seven days because they'll they'll play Mangoose again, spearheading them. So their spearhead Mangoose can go back to back games. So right there, that's going to give us a strong barometer of who at least will be your two seed, because Mangoose spearhead will play back to back within a, yeah. four days of each other, and Mangoose will have three games in seven days, and we'll know if they're going to be a top two team or a team that's going to fight it out for three, four, five, and six. Who's who's the team that's not going to make it uh, quickly to wrap things up here? I, I don't. I'm not going to discount KGP. Uh, uh, party crashers. A little bit worried about. A little yeah, worried about it, party crashers. It's going to be the, like we we already saw week one. They didn't have Fred's Bree uh, lined yeah. up, and uh, you know under center it was Jeans the Alexi. Yeah, uh, there it looks like they're going to be splitting reps potentially with a bit of an injury that uh, Fred's Bree's were still recovering from from the. Uh, winter season so yeah uh, so yeah that's it's gonna be interesting that's for sure all right divvy um and uh divvy i was like is our biggest division i believe we have 38 teams in division e this year iggy i believe so right so playoff format for division e and as my computer is loading up with the fpf page so the playoff format for division e that we will go with this year is 32 of the 38 will qualify for the playoffs. Dead air. I was waiting for you did to jump I lose in. You? I don't know. I like I, I was waiting for I you. I was you? like, oh, I guess he's not jumping in here. So 32 38 will qualify for the playoffs. And what we're gonna do, which we're still determining right now of how we're gonna go with, we're toying with the idea of bracket, like you see in NCAA college basketball and women's basketball for NCAA. Or maybe a reseed, but the bracket might be the better play because of the unknown of maybe we could have a Cinderella as a number 32 seed playing the number one overall seed down the road. So I, I'm intrigued. I think this is going to be fun to watch. Division E, we know some of the holdovers from, from the Division 6, 6D uh, seasons in this in this year. Um, look, there's some good teams that I got to see. I got to see the Warriors play. Uh, yesterday against Longhorns, it was all the youth versus the um, the veterans over here, right. and Kevin Summers um, has great potential, like to be a really good quarterback in this league. Uh, we look at their roster as a whole; uh, they have athletes. They're young; they're going to learn and grow here. It's one game, but I want to see them play a team that's equal in strength of size and, and style of play, and we'll have a better idea if they are a legitimate threat to be a, a contender in Division E. But after the first game. I give them a strong B plus in how they um, had a good game against the Longhorns. What made you not give them an A? Oh, they, they should have blown up the Longhorns, right? But he's kept them in the games. Too many big plays. 
Uh, they made John Moody look like Patrick Mahomes at times. And um, they could have easily blown this team out by like 40, but they, just, they haven't really – it's kind of like a boxer. The, the style points are there, but they can't find the knockout punch. They couldn't find the knockout punch required to beat them. And I just think now, as they get more and more immersed into the season, they hopefully they find that knockout blow and, and have that work in their favor. And another team I, I'm intrigued by, Iggy, is uh, Mamma Mia. You know, they, they're flying out of the gates, <laughs> 82 points scored, 12 points against, they're 2 0. Um, they were phenomenal in their win yesterday. And you talk about this roster, what they have, led by the captain, Michael Caparelli, the veteran amongst the young sheep of this Laval Senior Academy roster. They have a good team to work with. And watch out for the defense, my friend. The Miles Garrett of this team. You know who that is? Uh, Luca Pietra Roria. Yes. Dude's a stud. Watch out for Luca. Okay. He What's, is a stud. Uh, give, give us a bit of a profile here. Uh, what does he stand at? Six five here. No, is, he's uh, about five five eight or... five nine. Okay, so is he blocking a lot of passes and, and passing four sacks? Lane? Four sacks. Yes, I, I see four the four sacks. sacks. Uh, but you look at the roster, right? Nick Kinez, George Coots. Uh, they got the Catman uh, Matthew uh, Petropolis as well. They have some good players in this roster, and they've ran through the first two games so far. And we'll see as they get deeper and deeper. And, and I think they can make a deeper run in the season of how they built up their roster. So I'm intrigued to see what Mamma Mia does as a whole. They might be a 10-0 and team. I think eight, nine wins is probably their target right now. Why, again, I'll ask questions. Why not 10-0? and They're beating up teams 45-12, 37 Well, I think there will be a loss along the way. There'll be a bad game that they have because they're missing players. Um, and remember, these are these are guys who are high schoolers, right? Who And I'm sure they're going to have other obligations to do in the month of May going towards June with the exams coming up here. But they, I agree, there's no reason why they shouldn't be 10-0. But there's always going to be that glitch at some point. And I think in this situation that we're in right now, they've been impressive. Style points have been impressive. They have mercy teams. They put them into submissions of headlocks that they put their opponent to sleep, Iggy. They are a team that is brute force on the field, and if they keep up with this clip, um, they might be your favorites to win Division E when we hit early August. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, going to be a team to watch out for. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, in Div E, I'm uh, you know as the uh, the page here just loads up real quick. Uh, I, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued just by the two and start of no brain, no gain. Uh, I saw them uh, against Toon Squad, I believe it was, uh, in Brossard on Sunday night. Uh, it's a team with experience, a uh, team with speed, hands. Have a lot of uh, a lot of the you know experience of playing even Division Four, IV, Division Five in last year's winter, not last year's uh, winter twenty twenty three. Uh, season so uh, definitely going to be something to uh, to a team to watch out for no brain uh, no gain uh, Rafael Caron uh, with 10 TDs 3 INTs already after 2 games uh, and watch out for Timote Nema Lacasse potentially your receiver of the year early candidate for uh, for receiver of the year he has 8 uh, eight receptions on 8 targets 100% reception uh, target ratio there 113 yards and 6 TDs uh, in his first 2 games yeah I think that they could be a team to watch out for early early uh, signs right yeah. in the tail of the tape of who is the best team I mean like we, we can't do a power ranking yet but I mean if there was one Mami would be up there and, and this team would be up there as well um, Kellers to Rohan I think you know, they've always been here, Eggy. They've they've been hanging out for the last couple of years and they put up a good fight. And maybe this is the year they go six and four, seven and three, and have a good effort that they get themselves a higher seed in the playoffs here. And Le Petit Carrot Jr. I'm I'm fascinated by this team and how they have built up their team now for this season compared to where they are in years past here. But you look at the roster, um, they could be a dark horse to watch out for if they have the full team that we're accustomed to seeing out there yeah although a 26 to 12 uh score line against bloodline a, a returning team from the uh the spring season last year 
I I would have if, if it was a, a full forced Pizzicato Junior. Uh, I would have I would have expected like a 35 to 6, 35 12 uh, victory. But it is you know first first season for Alexandre Mans uh, throwing out there. It's it, playing quarterback is super difficult at first. Uh, yeah. It's not what you think it is. Uh, he only completed 38 percent of his passes, so uh, he's gonna have to learn you know hitting short and letting your receivers do the work. But three TDs, one INT. Not terrible. Uh, he may he. Let's see how much he relied on his legs. Not so much. Three three rushing attempts, but for forty two yards. So whenever he is running, he's get he's definitely getting yards after uh, after the run, picking up first downs in that way, uh, and seems to be distributing the ball uh, well. Right. No one had more than uh, than six targets uh, and three players. You know, five. The, the target ratio was five five four one. So. Maybe focusing on three guys too much, but when you're focusing on three guys and 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 spreading the ball out from three guys in Division E, that's mm-hmm. that is the essentially the equivalent of spreading it out uh, in like Division A with five guys. Yeah, I think this division will they they'll have like we'll have the powers, okay? But but I think that this division is set up where we will have upsets along the way. And I I believe in the overall context, again, 32-38 will qualify for the playoffs here. The bare minimum to get in as a playoff team, I think two wins could be enough, given how robust the number of teams are in this division. That and the the fact that there's already, you know, I, what is it, six teams as we look at the overall standings. Uh, we see that all the teams in red, now uh, you already have one, two, five teams sitting at zero and two. Um, you know it's still early in the season. Uh, it's you know flags a game, especially flag in FPF, very difficult. If if you're not customized uh, to it, you're gonna have to learn quick uh, and learn what works and what works for your team quickly. Uh, and the the wins for some of these teams might come in week seven, eight, nine. Uh, so, you know, if you're losing early, early on, don't get discouraged. Uh, it's a, it's a difficult game to pick up and th- to see what works, uh, and, and reach out to us, uh, reach out to me, reach out to Mo, uh, talk to us. Uh, if you see us at the field, we, we can definitely help you out offensively, defensively. Um, yeah, just reach out to us where we're always willing to, to see teams, uh, succeed, especially ones that are struggling early on. Division C, uh, same thing. We have, uh, I believe, 25 teams in it. So the playoff format will be as if, same thing as Div 3. 20, 25 qualify. And what we'll have is a bracket format style for Division C. So the division winners will be your overalls 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, 12 teams, top, the top 12 will automatically be in the bracket. Seeds 13 through 20 and seeds in between those numbers will play each other. And those four winners will advance to the tournament of 16 with the other teams to form a Sweet 16 tournament in a bracket uh, format here, like, like it was for Div 3. And people liked it. And I look at it now, Iggy, with what we have. We have some old names back. The commissioner back, uh, led by Brent Bach. And friends with Danny now, once again, back full force. Trap Stars, they had a, uh, a disappointing end to their season in 4A. Uh, Rico Riders, you know very well. West Island Boys, it seems like West Island Boys, Rico Riders are tied at the hip. Uh, joined at the hip in terms of where they've been together in years past. Uh, you look at Mangoose, a team that we know very well. Jagerbaum, uh, there's some Blue Dry, who I got to see for the first time in a long time with a big fat with a big win as well. Big fat bats as well. I know you to pimps. Uh, backfield penetration, trying to uh, show why they're a power now moving forward. This division, uh, and Le, Le Renard Viff as well, this division um, has more intrigue, more storylines, more jeopardy. I don't think there's a true heavy favorite. I think there's a group of teams that will be favorites, but no one that's going to be ahead of the pack when it comes down to it. I love I love this division. This might be the most fun division. Uh, I think Division C is always like that 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 just the right mix of number of teams and. You know, it's that mix of Division Four, Division Three teams. Um, I, I I always love Division C, and this year's no different. It's uh, you're you know you listed out the uh, the names out there, especially Jagerbaum coming back. That's going to be uh, fun for them to to see how they fare. Um, I mean, there's the the other side of this though. There's some teams that are going to struggle. 
the never overtimes, the Trinities, the Nighthawks. If this was the Nighthawks from like Division Five making a jump to Division C, uh, that that would have been a big jump. So uh, if I think this is the right Nighthawks team, uh, we'll just take a, a quick look. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, they're going to struggle in Division C just because there's so many good teams and, and uh, rising teams. One of those rising teams is Win Diesel, right? I'm going to be yeah. super intrigued, especially after a, a heartbreaking loss in the finals. I, how many times did we say that this, this, this is the team that's going to win Division 5A? They're going to win Division 5A or at least make the finals, which they they uh, they had their uh, hopes set high for a Division 5A title. Like just yeah. came, you know, half a yard short uh, from uh, from seeing that come true. So let's see how they take uh, to Division C. Uh, wh- how, what kind of record do you see them finishing with uh, over under uh, five wins? Well, I, I think for Win Diesel, um, oh, I think they hit five. I, I think they go six and Unless four. Unless I can't hear you. Uh, Ali Reza, Nightingale, can we hear Mo Khan here? Can you hear me now? Oh, we have a little technical difficulty. It's me. Oh, it's I think it's me. Because your head said. Keep going, Mo. Yes, I'll keep going here as we talk about Win Diesel here. I, I think they can easily be a, a for sure five win, six win team. They bring back the same cast of characters that they had uh, during the winter season. You, you talk about Felix Sabag, who's, who's a good rusher. Will Sabag being a great quarterback that he is. Nicky Andre, excellent tackler out there. Um, you look at uh, Marcus Lynch, uh, a game breaker who just came up short at the end of that football game for the game winning touchdown points. Bart. Uh, is a really good DB for this team. They have pieces in place. And, you know, they start off with friends with Danny on Sunday coming up, and that'll be a good test for them because after that, they get Trinity and Commission, which I think should be wins for them, and they get Rico Riders to kind of sandwich that first four games. If they're 2-2 two and two after four games, I think it's a it's a good number for them to have, Iggy. And that puts them on track to be 5-5, five and five, if not 6-4, and four, maybe 7-3. and three. They're a good team, and I think this step up in weight class will help see where they are in the overall FPF landscape. But I like them a lot. They've earned their right, even though they came up uh, with no silverware at the end of, of the winter season. But I see no reason why they shouldn't be uh, uh, in that conversation for Div C. You want to go through the – I mean, you, you kind of did, but uh, – and I missed the first half of it. Just some audio problems. Friends of Danny. Uh, but if we just look at their schedule, yeah, I would have to say uh, – Last win, so one and one. Uh, I think they'll go two and one, uh, three and one. I think I'm not sure who Team Ruthless is. This is a somewhat of a new team, so if they're new uh, for me, uh, unless I just quickly warehouse, I believe is new. That's I'm gonna go four one four and two, four and three, four. Uh, yeah, that I, I'm gonna see a lot of wins early on in this season, and I think the losses are gonna pile up a little uh, more towards the end. Well, the last three uh, games, yeah, they should beat uh, Team Ruthless is uh, a, a newer team, and I believe Warehouse is uh, is also a bit of a newer team here, uh, who all ironically faced uh, Team Ruthless in, in Week One. Yeah, I, I, I see them going six and four. Uh the final record for uh, Yeah, they're their last uh, well by the way, they're they're playing, you know me, Iggy, I, I love those numbers of, of games played in, in, in days, right? So Yes. They're gonna play seven in twenty eight days. <laughs> uh at the beginning or at the beginning, end? beginning of the season. Um their last three games, Big Fat Bats, West Island Boys, Trap Stars. That's a murderer's row of teams. Um and that won't be easy for them. But I, I can see the mean of five and five for sure. Six wins, I think, is doable. Seven will be fantastic for them. But you look at their losses, and before we get to the next team, you're like, I think friends with Danny could very well be a loss. Rico Rice could very well be a loss. The last three could all be losses, and they they can they can steal one here and there against the big ones. But it won't be as easy as it was for them in five A. That's for sure. But I think they are definitely in that conversation to be a, a, a team that's playoff bound and could very well be in the final four. And and don't forget, especially for everyone watching, like a four and six, five and five, six and four record is really it's not bad. It's really not a bad record. Uh, there's right. so many good teams in in FPF, and you're going to see a lot of teams, uh, you know, in that five and five, four and six, six and four range, and and it's gonna 
is that going to comfortably get you into uh, into the playoffs, Mo? Uh, that, that that we're going to see, and we can have a quick discussion there to wrap up Division C on the number of wins that you're going to need for uh, for to make the uh, the playoffs yeah. in Division C. And just before we get to that, uh, backfield penetration, I know they might be the favorites, right? But keep an eye out for um, late in the season with their roster. Uh, Ronnie Ismis and, and Rokeni Joseph, both guys, congratulations on them winning the Vanny Cup with, with U, University of Montreal. They got the rings the other day, fat, gorgeous rings. Keep an eye out for, for this team because training camps, I believe, I believe begin the first weekend of August. Mm-hmm. And it begins in that window, right? August right. 2nd to August 7th, whatever it is. If they're missing these two guys, it changes the whole complexion of their team for the playoffs. I'm not saying now, but for the playoffs moving forward. Yeah, so for playoffs, to watch for out sure. For. It's, they're they're going to have to make uh, plan, uh, reserve plans, right? Yeah, they, they might have to call some uh, artillery in, the, in, in, their, in their reserves to get them forward. So as for your question about the, the minimum wins here in this division, Again, so let's break it down to, into into groups here, right? For division winners, nine for sure, eight for sure. I think seven could be enough to be a yeah, division depending, winner. Yeah, a depending. Weaker, on a weaker winner. group would be uh, seven wins. Yeah, exactly. To be to be in the top twelve, so I'm seeing like seeds six through twelve, right? That 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 uh, automatic qualifier. Um, for I'd say five six is going to be enough for that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't see a four uh, a team with four wins uh, being in that. No, no. That but when you get to 13 to 20, right? And that's when you kind of break it down a little bit more, where I think in the 13 to 16 range, five, six wins. And then anything below that, three, four wins. So if you're 17, 18, 19, 20 seats, you're three, four wins. Anything from 16 to 13, you're five, six wins. So I, I think that's how it's going to be. I think three should be enough to get in as, as a 20 seed in the playoffs. Okay. All right. So, all right, Division B, uh, as we move along here in this season. So Div B, we have not – we're not going to give the playoff format yet. We're still debating what the situation will be. So we have nine teams in this division right now. Uh, Bruins showing why they're better than the Boston Bruins and how they've been so far. Infantry is the team I'm watching out for in this division, Iggy. Um, they've really grown on me. Like, I mean, Div 3, they like they made a run in the Div 3 playoffs, Higgs, that I uh, was speaking to some of the guys. I was speaking to Nick DiMalo, um on Sunday. So I can't hear you, Mo. You can't hear me now because your headsets – get proper headsets, Iggy. As Ziggy's headsets are no longer working, I guess. I can hear you out with Nightingale, but Iggy's headsets are not working because the battery power is dead on his headsets. So I'll let Iggy figure that out. So I'll let Iggy figure that out as his head is now in shame for the fact that his headsets don't work properly. But here's the thing for Division B. I look at... Infantry, they had a run, a Cinderella run, and they were three points away from going to the finals and maybe beating up the Bruins. They're my dark horse team in this division. I think they have a good core to work with. Nick Damala has really put together, or this team has really been put together well by uh, Roy Smergen, how he's built it up. They have a lot of chemistry with each other here. Uh, Charles-Olivier Vachon is is a great compliment piece for Rory as a receiving core. And you think about their 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 passing right now. Zach Stacy is the quarterback, and Nick Damalo out there as well. Zach and Nick, you know, speaking to those two guys, high hopes. I think they're going to really put some numbers up this season. I think Zach takes that next step in his quarterback development, and you can see that that fire in his eyes, given how they came up short in the winter playoffs in the Final Four. So I, I am really intrigued to see what they do this year. Infantry is the team I'm circling as the one to watch out for. Iggy, can you hear me now? No, he can't. Iggy cannot hear me right now because his thing is not uh, working properly here. So we'll get Iggy back in there in a couple seconds here as I talk more about Division 2. But here's the thing that I'm, I'm intrigued to see in, in Division B as well. Um, teams like Silent Ticklers didn't have the quarterback week one. They had Andrew Blevins throwing for them, and he lost by four to infantry. 
Um, they will be in the top half of this division here with the Bruins. I think they are a good team. Jordan Panetta is good. I know you're not going to have Daniel Mancini this season because of his lower body injury. Easy W. They are a good team as well in terms of what they've built up as as a whole. I'm intrigued to see what Beer Belly Brigade and One Stop do because Beer Belly Brigade taking the step up in weight class. Uh, you think about uh, One Stop with what they have. H.G. Zepatelli, Alex Blay, Charles Cassette, another McGill guy, Michael Caparelli, Ryan McNally. This is also a step, a step up in weight class for this team here. For A.J. Zepatelli as a quarterback, what he can do. And I think for oh. him now, um, Iggy, is your headset okay now or what's yes, going yes, on? Yes, we're good now. It's Excellent. Not, so I, you're, 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 you're getting one stop wrong. It's not A.J. Zepatelli, it's Matt Zepatelli. Oh, Matt Zepatelli, he was not the quarterback. But he's not. He got injured during the playoffs. He got injured. That's what his shoulder injury. Yes. Right. My so apologies. I, I lost track of uh, yes, the Zepatelli's yes, man. Yes. Matt and AJ yes. almost <laughs> like. But no, but that, it's a step up weight class for, for one stop, right? I mean, yep. when you think about their team, um, uh, Half Centers FC, they were also close to going to the finals, right? And so this this is a core group that's probably better in terms of athleticism. Charles Cassette, a guy that's been playing this league um, not as much, but also well known in the tackle world. Athlete and a half here, Janai Lewis, we know very well. Uh, Luca Lecceze is a very good pass rusher. Caparelli, we know. Ryan McNally, great uh, play caller as a defensive captain. Um, they might have a, a chance to really upset a team or two in the rankings and be a 5-5, five 6-4 and 6-4 five, and four team uh, once the dust is settled for the playoffs run. Yeah, they're a hit-and-run kind of team. In what sense? <laughs> oh, you didn't see the... the... There was some oh, yes, drama yes, in the yes, playoffs. yes. <laughs> I would see more of a drive-by. Oh, uh, that's funny. They're more of a drive-by. So we're going to have to do a better job with how we, uh, yes, when I hear Mo and when I don't hear Mo and uh, speaking with Nightingale there. I saw Mo, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, uh, you do a drive-by, Iggy. Yes, I know your headsets are, 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 are not working right now, but you do a drive-by as well. Yeah, so, something like that. So, uh, Division B, we're going to have eight teams make it for sure. We haven't decided yet. To well, be that, one's the, that one's still up for, uh, debate. for debate, and it will be finalized by week two with yeah. uh, Division B. Exactly. Uh, any dark horses in this division, Iggy, in your mind? Mm, it's hard to pick a dark horse because there's – well. I was going to say there's no bad teams. I think the Hateful Eight realized qu very quickly that uh, they signed up for the wrong division. Mm -hmm. um, man, a dark horse. I don't know. Can you call, like, Silent Ticklers a dark horse? No, it's, no, it's, no. They'll, 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 they'll no, be a tough team. Like, the answer is no. It's like, is Easy W a dark horse? They just won, like, obliterated Division Three. Is Infantry a dark horse? Maybe. Uh, why? Because, like, Z Zach said winter season uh let's let like uh, you can call him a dark horse maybe now in week uh week one of the spring season but if would you be surprised that they finish seven and three like no not necessarily no so i don't know dark horse it's, it's hard to pick one because every team's good yeah no for sure i, I agree with you on that and I think they'd be. I think it really starts separating itself probably week seven and beyond. I think that's where we see a separation of teams of who are your top two and then moving forward. But again, the playoff format will give us a better idea uh, what we discussed upon earlier today. But if it's if it's going to be close, I think it'll be close to the middle of the pack than the top yeah. or bottom of this of this division. That's how I see it right now with this division. Uh, you know, storylines that you're going to look for here, just to quickly wrap up the uh, Division B, you're going to look at uh, Gab Charles uh, Champagne uh, starting a quarterback for the first time uh, throwing in Division B. Yeah. Uh, you're going to look to see if Easy W can uh, can blow blow through the competition like they did in uh, in Division Three in the winter season. I like you like you mentioned Beer Belly. Uh, yes, it's a step up, but they were here in Division B last season. Uh, they didn't have um, um, their quarterback for for the for the most of the season last year, opting for, uh, to go with Jason Rossi after an injury uh, by Fafar. Uh, so yeah. how are they gonna you know improve? Uh, look to improve on their I think like two and eight season in uh, Division right. B last season. So some of the storylines to keep an eye out for Division B. All right, on to women's. I'm excited for the women's uh, divisions one and two this year. A and B, a big part. A and B, a big part. I apologize for that. Okay, so women's A. Playoff format. 
We're taking the page playoff system. What does that mean? Very simple. All four teams qualify. We have we have broken down to into two pieces. One in the semifinals, if you want to use that term, the one seed will play the two seed. The winner will advance automatically to the women's A final. Direct, yep. Directly. The loser of the one versus two matchup will play the winner of three versus four. Yep. And obviously the winner of that game goes on to the final to play in that moment. So essentially, if you finish in the top two spots of women's A, you get two cracks at getting to the finals. If you're seeds three and four, you only get one chance to get into the finals more or less. Yep. Yeah, so, yeah that's it's going to be interesting for sure. Uh, I like that. Uh, it, it, well, we, we, we've used this for Division A before, and people like it. It's, it's, it gives more games as well, right? And that's yeah. the key, right? You want to, you know, for a smaller division, you don't want them to lose interest in, in terms of what it can be. But I look at it now, like Sub Zero, they, they smash women's one, like there's no tomorrow. But I look at UKTR, I mean, uh, a team that we've seen that played in years past, right, in spring seasons and fall cups. Um, not a great game for them coming out of the blocks here, but. Uh, Maybe they, they become a tougher out as you get more comfortable and more uh, acclimated to playing FPF again as they once were. I believe, though, in that first game, I don't believe uh, Emily Adam is the uh, is the starter for the team. I believe uh, Andrean Cadaret uh, would be. Is she right. on the roster? Uh, don't necessarily see her on the roster. I, I do not see her been. on the roster. Um, yeah, if it is Emily Adam, that would be a step up from uh, from women's two, uh, moving up into women's A in a tightly niched uh, division here. Um, but yeah, that's that's gonna be a team that you know I I like the pieces, but it is a step below. Uh, like uh, you know we've we've seen Charlie Ru- uh, Roy, uh, Annabella Charbon- uh, Carbonneau. Uh, Camille Bergeron they're they're not necessarily household names but uh, uh, and I believe with Rekka uh, snapping yeah. uh, I'll, I'll give it a shot uh, Siva Subra Maniam uh, snapping for the team uh, she's she's going to be one of the better snappers uh, I think in, in we division. should have Chris Rive our, our video wizard go around the women's division the community and ask him to spell Rekka's last name and the winner gets a free FPF t-shirt. Did I not uh, do a somewhat decent job? No, but spelling her last name is much oh, more challenging. spelling. Oof. Yeah. 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 Good luck. All right. Um, Sub-Zero. I don't see any weaknesses with this roster. And with which, and which, which, which roster? Sub-Zero. Oh, Sub-Zero. Yeah, again. Yeah. I don't see any weaknesses. Um, I think... Because they're like they they have they have a bigger plan, which is to get ready for the uh, worlds. I think in Finland at, at right. the middle to end of August, sometime in late summer. So it's more or less like these guys using this time, which is great for them as reps to keep themselves um, fresh, keep themselves linked in, locked in, and just having that ready to go. And you look at that roster; <laughs> these are Olympians, potential yeah. potential. Olympians on the radar of Football Canada. And I don't see any weaknesses on that roster. And I think, it might be a hot take, but I think the defensive side of the ball is actually better than the offensive side of the ball. The the defense is so good, and I'm not throwing shade on the offense. I'm not saying the offense is bad. It's not what I'm saying. But I think the defensive side, because we know how good the offense is, and I think the defense is better. I think the defense is is lightning quick. They're they're so smart. They, they it's just a juggernaut of a defense. Yeah, it turns the ball over a lot. You you saw they they swarmed. Of course, not a natural or first rep quarterback in uh, in. Uh, Sorry, yeah. name was escaping me. Uh, they, they, you know, they cooked, uh, they cooked some chopped liver uh, in the finals. Like the defense for me is is potentially better than the offense, and that's a, that's a scary thought for a lot. Yeah, of I mean, Jessica both stopping at six sacks, <laughs> only six sacks. She's at one fifteen for her career, and you know she's moving up the charts right now as as a pass rusher in this division. 
and that overall, not only this, that, but for men's too, right? She's also uh, a key player for some of the men's team that she's played for in years past. Yep. And I don't think it's a hot take at all. I think you're absolutely right about that. I think this is a team that can can run it. Um, as I said before, I don't see any weaknesses. And I think there's a bigger ulterior plan to them because they want to keep these uh, fine athletes in shape and, and together for what they want to build up. And uh, probably don't lose a game. Probably don't lose a game. Uh, it's, I, might, I hope not. I hope I'm proven wrong that they lose five games to make right. it more exciting. But right now, I just don't see them having any uh, hiccups along the way here. Do you think uh, Matrix is uh, is gonna you know have a better than a 500 record here? Uh, from my you know they didn't. Is it just the quarterback didn't have uh, stats? No, it was Elizabeth, I guess. Elizabeth Ashkar. Um, who's you know I've heard the name around. I've seen uh, I've seen her play a, a, a few games. Uh, of course, Emily Papillon uh, on the squad. She was uh, that what. We'll we'll talk about it, I guess, a bit more in women's B. The the context would make a bit more sense. But uh, Emily Papillon had a had a great final for uh, for Ibu yeah. in women's too. Uh, she's gonna she you know she against the sub zero defense that I was saying is is potentially you know e well potentially they are elite. She had ten receptions on thirteen targets for eighty seven yards. So Emily Papillon is gonna be uh, definitely a the leading receiver on this uh, on this matrix team. Absolutely. All right, on to women's B. Um let's hold off on the on the playoff format for women's B. I want to discuss something with you off air if that's cool with you, Iggy. Oh, okay. Yes. You and Jeff and everyone else included as well, right? Okay. So here's what we have to look at right now for women's B. This is gonna be fun to watch. This is gonna be amazing. This is gonna be an all out not war. I don't want to use that term war. That's not no. a proper term I like to use. But this will be blitz. Blitz. It will be it will be chippy. It will be edgy. And reason why Le Petit Miet played Red Nation and Red Nation smoked in 20 nothing. Uh -huh. The trash talking was on point. And I am excited because there are some good teams. Hibu with what they did. They were so close but came up short in the finals. Um, this is gonna be fun to watch, man. I really think this is gonna come down like the, the, the top two seeds are not gonna have an easy ride to get the top two seeds. Uh, if it's gonna be that down the road, no, uh, I think I think you're right though. The the rivalries are growing in the women's division, and you, like you said uh, already, uh, Wednesday night in Laval. Uh, chippies of uh, chippy was a word you threw out there. Uh, you're going to be seeing, a, I, I guess, a bit more of that. And and as these teams play each other more, and they know their strengths and weaknesses, and what to attack and and what to avoid, uh, you're just going to see better and better games. And I think you're already getting treated to that uh, so far this spring season. Yeah, like Hibu, they they they're they're a good team. I I look at their roster. I know they haven't played a game yet. And their first game will be against A Town, who got who got wrecked, unfortunately, and might be in tough. But I think Ibu is going to be in that top three. Uh, I think Red Nation will be in the top three. But they're going to miss Alice Sobel, who's going to be with the Alouettes for a CFL training camp um, for pretty much the rest of May into I think, oh for sure all of May next two weeks plus yeah. a bit of June I think it is. So could, could Red Nation, which I think can weather the storm. Be in that conversation for sure. They will be in that conversation, and you know they got themselves a stud player in this roster that that I got to see play uh, yesterday for Red Nation. I beg your pardon, as I get the roster up, I want to make sure I have the right name for for this player. Yeah, um, um, Beckles. No, Noemi Olman. She is an unbelievable tackler. Uh, covers a lot of ground. Like I, I mean, she is a, a pristine cover corner, and. You know, we we spoke about Renation, you know, with the microscope at some times here. She is a piece that they're missing. They they might be one piece away from being like a legitimate queens of the matter type of thing here, but she she addresses a lot of things for this team as a defensive stalwart for them. And if she can figure it out this game quick, watch out. She could be a, a defensive player candidate as well. Okay, yeah. She, I'm seeing their eight tackles in the first game. Uh so just and not being picked on from your point of view. She like was targeted by Morgan. She was targeted by her, by, by MCV. But Valois couldn't get anything going on against her. Like, every time she would challenge her, 
it was like very minimal gain. And I think that's going to be key to see how they play out. But, you know, a team that you have been a fan of, Wolfpack, Camille Dumas, you know, I like her. I like her as a quarterback. I think she's going to have a good season this year and be a quarterback of the year candidate in uh, in this roster that she's on this season. Yeah, I, I you know me, I, I do. Uh, I, I like that Wolfpack roster. And, and just the more they play together, it's just a team that is going to get more comfortable with her system and, and they're, they're already there. Uh, and yeah, 53, 12, uh, drubbing over a town. We'll see how the a town, you know, bounces back, uh, through the tutelage of, uh, of Tara Mrakic there as the, as the coach for the team. And I'm, my, my interesting team here to, to look out for is, uh, Le boys. They beat and shut out wildcats 24 yeah. to nothing. Uh, not a lot of teams, um, not a lot of names I'm familiar with here. Uh, so I'm definitely going to want to see this team play. Uh, 24 nothing over Wildcats is is a good way to start your FPF season, FPF careers. So um, I'm intrigued by this team, definitely. Yeah, they get Le Petit Miette coming up uh, next week. Next week. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they do because they get Petit Miette, Hibou, not going to be easy for them in, in, in that sense as well. Um, in fact, they play Le Petit Miet Hibou like four times, like back to back, like, you know, four weeks in a row here. And then they get Red Nation uh, late June here and they play them back to back. So it's a weird schedule for them, but they'll be fun to watch if, they, if they're going to be in that competition. They're 1 0, which is a good start for them. I think they might be a 5 and 5 team. And for those who curious to know, I'm curious to know their their name, but I think Le Boys is based off of the movie, the hockey movie, right. Le Boys. Oh, I'll have to ask yeah. them because it became it became a popular uh, movie in Quebec. Actually, it was a, it was a Quebec movie, yep. and it was sort of like um, slap shot, a bit of that in in that rendition. So I'm going to ask them about that when I see them if they're based of, if they based their team nickname off of the Le Boys uh, movie uh, trilogy yeah. that they had. Right. So. But I think women's two is going to be fun to watch Iggy, uh, as a Me. whole, and I can't wait to see this uh, division involved. All right, um, co-eds. Eggs, let's get through this here quickly here for co-eds. Um, right now, we know it's the same cast of characters for co-ed one. Uh, pretty much, I know Pass Whippin's in this now division here, but plenty of fish, easy fun. IG team, Vultures now in this division, Kiss My Enzo, which you know very well, and and the Team Pigs as well, the Plus Net. Oh, 0-2. Oh I want to, I want to, but I think that changes for them. But this is tough to gauge because I don't know who the favorite is in this division. I really don't. Uh, I mean, gotta go with the the div- uh, coed one crown of plenty of fish, right? I, they, that I, I've written in for articles for the coed division in the past, and plenty of fish were always that team that was good but was always missing something. And then they added that year, they added Rocco Cristiano. I'm like, Oh, that, that was a good ad. That, that was, that's the kind of thing that they needed. Then they brought on mode like as quarterback really liked that addition to the team. Um, because again, the three men, three female really matters where you position your females. And if they can be down the middle quarterback snap and, and safety, yeah, it gives a big edge uh, to the teams that can place the the female players in down the middle, and plenty of fish is one of those teams. They have a female and snapper as well. Sorry, so they have a female quarterback usually and a female a snapper. Now, of course, Dylan Taylor taking on the reins as uh, as like mode like as was uh, nursing an injury, uh, but. I would assume we'll have to get confirmation there, but assume that uh, Mode like Cass will take over, uh, whether it's midway or late into the season, if not right. earlier. Uh, so, look, plenty of fish. And then they added Julian McLaren Thompson at rush. He was, you know, a, a killer for these running quarterbacks. So that neutralizes IG teams, uh, Jeans the Alexi, neutralizes Ben McMahon in a big way. Um, but even against non, non-running quarterbacks, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a menace always. Uh, right. Especially on, on third and fourth downs. So right. I think for me, it's plenty of fish. And then Easy Fun is always a, is, is a team that wins. They just they find ways to win. So uh, those are would be my uh, two favorites here. For, yeah, uh, for I, I agree with you on that. Um, I think IG team will always be in that conversation, no matter how you look at it. I mean, 
you know, they're, they're, it's just the forever rivals that you guys have, right? It's, it's developed into a really good competitive rivalry that you guys have with this team moving forward here. Um, but I look at Vultures and what they bring for this co-ed version uh, of the Vultures team. Um, you think about their roster that they had. I mean, they had a tough spring season last year, but you, you get back Gigi Kabilo Bonte. Uh, you look at James Drysdale, Manuel Arroyo, Phil Roberts, Ben McMahon, Emma Townsend, uh, Asselin. It's a good roster. It's a, it's a good roster of talent that you, that you have. And they get their first game against IG team, which would be a, a funny chess match because you think about Jinsley Alexi, what he does as, as a running quarterback. Who do you have running him? Who, who do you have chasing them, right? I mean, and I think in, in this situation now for Vultures, if they could beat IG team in easy fun the first two games and and be 2-0 before plenty of fish, back-to-back games, that's pretty impressive, I, I think, that if they can get two wins in the first four weeks of their season. Vultures have a tough start to the schedule here. Their first four games, row of co-ed one. That's yeah. going to be tough for them. It's not going to be easy, but if they go 2-2, two and two, I think that will be a relief for them. We reverse the uh, the audio there, uh, oh. Nightingale. Oh, you have so. a bit of a glitch now? So, there. Uh, Mo, what was the last thing you said? I said if they go 2-2, two and two, I think that's a good start to this year. It is, a, it is a good start. If they split, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, co-ed two eggs. Um, I, look, I saw pick six play. Uh, they, th- I'm circling them, and and uh, there's two teams I'm circling, which we'll get to right now. Pick six is being one of them. Um, Seth Glean as a quarterback uh, was was very good against uh, back that pass up, and they have a good defense to go along with this offense here. If they can get this down pat, Denzel Edilo, who we know very well, uh, is a monster player for them if he's available, which is you know sometimes not the case. Uh, Tomas Jose was not there, but he's a great player. Emma Sinclair is a good solid player. Of course, talk about Galena. Watch out for this new guy. If he's uh, if he's a long term player, David Sue. Okay, huh. he's okay. six foot five, probably. What? About, <laughs> yeah, six five, two twenty five ish, two thirty ish. Yeah, runs like a deer, and is a matchup problem. Interesting. Watch out, David Sue. Watch out for this guy. Oh, I've seen this guy. Maybe he was at the combine or something, or his his player profile uh, picture is up there. Okay. Yeah, you know. interesting. This is uh, so the recruiting is strong in pick six. Yes, yes. I watch out for them. The team I'm really watching out for is Cavaliers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, they 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 wrecked um, they wrecked uh, Bolas uh, Profundas uh, by a lot. <laughs> I think you got to go to Mexico soon, Mo. Yes. Bolas yeah. profundas. Come on. Yeah. Look, uh, it's been a long day today, man. But it's the six in the morning. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> but they they you have... Went to bed at six in the morning? No, I went. I got up at six in the morning. Oh, I went to bed okay. at one last night. I was still wired from working the shift up in Laval. Yeah. Um, but they have athletes, male and female. Um, their defense is really good. Really, really good. Uh, Emil Gregoire, Emerson Buchan had four touchdowns on pick sixes yesterday. Uh, Vanessa Dove is a really good pass rusher once she gets this game going down, going down pat for her. Yeah. Jessica Kambu Tadi is an underrated player. She was an all-star last year for women's two. She's really good. I think this defense can really be problems for some of these women, uh, co-ed two teams in this division. E- there's a name you mentioned. Um, how, oh yeah, Vanessa Dove. Yeah, she offensively. Watch out for this for her. Watch out for her to be potential uh, co-ed uh, female player, co-ed two female player of the year. Uh, if if not, maybe ch- rival and challenge for offensive player of the year in the division because uh, she has a great connection uh, with Juliette Bove playing yeah. with uh, with her in the women's division last year. They had an incredible connection, and I can see a lot of that uh, continuing in uh, in Koa too. Watch they, out for the name Vanessa Dove. They they are probably in a roster pickle on Sunday against Fit Squad because some of the the male players have a football practice that day, so they might have it in tough against uh, Fit Squad on Sunday morning at Loyola. We'll see what they do in that game. But though those two teams I'm watching out for, I think Koa too has some unique you know teams that I'm watching out for. Christmas kiss my kiss my Christmas balls 
I think are probably the favorites in this division here, Iggy. And why do you say that? Well, look, you look at the season last year that they had, right? And you look at the core roster that they, they have gone with this season. I mean, look, our boy, Paulo Del Rocco. He's back. He's back, baby. Alex Noel. Uh, they, they added, and she mentioned it yesterday, they added Lemise Aljundi to the roster. Mm-hmm. Marie Girard got hurt on Monday in her other co-ed game, uh, but she is a, a good player to look out for. Sir William Power. Um, it's a good team. I actually do what? This is a good team. Uh, I think this yep. is a good team as a whole. And I think they do have a, a chance to make some noise in this division here. I think it's a perfect remedy that they have. And they get the rookies, which they too are off to a good start. And I don't know, I don't know much about the rookies, and I apologize for that, Iggy, but I think they versus um, kiss, kiss My Christmas Balls will be fun to watch as a play this week. It will because that's the rookie, the rookies team from last spring season. Uh, definitely a lot of and, and and it's it's the rookies of the spring season plus. So it's Cedric Morris uh, who through two games has seven touchdowns, no interceptions, uh, three hundred twenty nine yards, completing seventy percent of his passes. Yeah, uh, with Elodie Simono. Already has eclipsed uh, 100 yards as a receiver. Mazen Wali, also same thing. Uh, they have three TDs combined uh, between the two of them. But right. then you have Edouard Leroux. And I believe Charles Vero is also on the squad. Oh, boy. Uh, with female players like anne Frédéric Tardif. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned, Eladzi Simono. These are high, high players. High quality players on the team. Mm-hmm. Th- this team is going to be serious. A, a 2-0 start. I'm not surprised. And if they beat out, because uh, my Christmas balls, uh, a team that clearly you have a, a keen eye out for for being top dog in the division, yep. a 3-0 and start and having that win over them could be a direct line for the number one seed for, oh, yeah. uh, for the rookies. Oh, yeah. All right, Kawhi 3. Um, so playoffs, we have it kind of figured out. I, we, we do have it figured out, I beg your pardon, not kind of. We do have it figured out here. So 12 teams in this division. 10 qualify. All right? All right. However, when it's settled, when the it'll be cleared, yes. essentially eight that will be in the playoffs. So what we're going to do is 10 make it, seven versus 10, eight versus nine. The two winners advance to the final two spots and will play in the next round of the playoffs here. So 10 will qualify with the playing game between seven versus 10, eight versus nine. Hmm, I did something and it didn't uh, work. Oh, I see. We're going to see the uh, the red appear here, Mo. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, I got I to gotta, uh, gotta refresh the page. I didn't... Oh, there you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. There, there you go. go. Excellent. All right. So, I, I look, some wor- this, is, this is the lowest of the co eds. So, some words of advice for gold diggers. Um, they play two games. Mm hmm. My advice to them, simplify your team. Don't run man to man in red zone. When you're on defense, don't run man to man. Just don't. Because you're gonna you're gonna have crossers and someone's gonna get it, gonna get it open and score a touchdown. Um, they do have some really good female athletes on this team here mm-hmm. uh, that could very well make some noise in this in this season. Uh, some players that I'm looking out for in terms of what they do, Veronica Salazar KO. She's got great potential. Nikki Limonadis, who we know very well. She's played in this in, in higher women's divisions. Yep. Uh, her strong pedigree as an athlete. Um, they could make noise, but they got to figure out simple plays on offense with Alex Adamidis as the quarterback and simpler plays on defense. If they can simplify their structure, they'll be a lot more competitive than what they had to do play in the first two games on Monday night at Mary Vick and then Papineau after. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to be looking out for, uh, am, am I looking at the uh, one and Niners? This was a team that uh, Alex Blair, Luca Caneville, and uh, and Charles Presser. Oh, yeah. Charles Presser at C-Press. quarterback uh, that made it, I believe, to the semifinals last year in, uh, in co ed three. Yeah. Uh, they're looking to come back, uh, and they've added a few, uh, a few more weapons in their arsenal. Uh, in terms of uh, female players, and Ophelia Richard, uh, de- very good def- uh, defender and offensive player here, uh, more more known as a defensive. Uh, she's gonna she's gonna help that defense uh, yeah. a lot. 
Um, so I'm see you know semifinal appearance last year. Can this team make it to the finals? Is going to be one of the uh, interesting things. And and building the the, the ongoing chemistry, right? Uh, you have Chaz Presser uh, throwing in Division E, I C believe, with Toon Squad, and throwing in uh, Coed Three here. How is his QB development going to come along? Uh, How's the chemistry with the team going to going to develop? That those those things remain to be seen. But if they do go, you know, well, and and the you see a steady progression from this team, uh, both from the male and female players, this could, this could be a team that goes all the way to the finals in co-ed three. Yeah. Uh, they, I remember them from spring season last year. They just came up short, but guess who's back? La sect. They're back, baby. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So I, I know they take a year off. They've had some growing pain since the COVID COVID-19 era of FPF made progress in their last season in FPF. I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect now because they've been off. But if they hit four wins, I think that's massive, and that'd be more than enough to qualify for the playoffs. Yeah, I, I you know, based from the last thing I that I uh, that I saw from them, I can see f four wins. Now, yeah. if I go through the season, and and what I noticed, you know, quickly, quick thoughts of Coed Three in in general, mm -hmm. it's it's strong. Coed Three got strong. It's not. I, I think it was weaker in even this the last winter uh, season, but going up against one and Niners in their first uh, first week is going to be going to be tough. I yeah. think the uh, we're we're gonna have to see free agent squad. You know, a lot a lot always relies on on quarterback play, so we're gonna see uh, that from them. I think Lesect is a team that a fairly newer team in in free agent squad. Uh, well, just not fairly new. New um, gold diggers might be a, a team that that if Mo you'd think Lasek would be uh, beating a team like Gold Diggers. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So, so you're looking at potentially a two and one start to the season. Uh, Le Pukis, I'm I'm not too sure about them. They they got an early victory. Chef Bande is a team that I'm intrigued them. by. What's that? Chef Bande, they're their team I'm intrigued by because I saw them play, and yeah. um, if they they have injury problems now. They they have Maria Girard got hurt, uh, the quarterback right. got hurt. Um, if they get the health stowed away and intact, they could be a, a, a five six win team in this division. Yeah, I'm gonna go over like four wins for uh, Lesac. I'm kind of with you there. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I think there's a bit of a top and lower half. There's no middle. I think it, mm. that's what we're gonna expect from this division this year. But it'll be fascinating to see how this goes uh, moving forward here. All right, eggs. That will do it for the first episode. Of Call me Ottawa. Okay. All right. We had a bit of glitches with the headsets and stuff, but that's okay. Make sure your I, your your pods are charged up. They were acting weird today. I don't know. Everything was weird. Ali Reza, the Nightingale, did a good job here of uh, turning off on and off the uh, yeah. the audio. He is so Nightingale, you my friend. He is Nightingale indeed. So a reminder: team photos this week they begin officially Sunday, moving forward here. So please be considerate for the scorekeepers. We'll take the picture, and we can do we can have a redo as well down the road. Uh, uniform policy still in play. The grace period for another week it goes into play as of week three. So please be aware of that. And get, if yeah. rosters again five games played for playoffs, and if you feel like there's, there's a issue where hey, well, how come player X didn't get the game played? Email us and we can figure it out as well. Um, also, forgot about that. I know we're on right now as Laval's going on, but for Laval outdoors and even indoors, but mostly for outdoors because it is a twofold to this point. Laval outdoors on Thursdays. No dogs, no alcohol. They're calling you. They're calling me right Laval. now to remind me as we speak. So no dogs or alcohol are permitted on their premises of the outdoor fields that they have that we use on Thursday nights. Indoor too. Yeah, you're indoor allowed, uh, pets in, indoors. <laughs> right, right. So just keep that in mind as well. If you bring your dog or cat or tiger or liger to uh, Laval for uh, for them to enjoy the uh, outdoor woods of uh, Boy Boulogne. All right, magic words, please. Ah, uh, Mokan, last season. I don't do it uh, this season. I still don't do it. Uh, good night, Carolina Hurricanes.